In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at five features that I really like in the 2025.6 update. Check it out. What's going on guys? I hope you're all doing well. This release has got a big focus on some further quality of life improvements that Home Assistant have just been working towards over the last couple of months. This video is based on the beta, beta, better. It's, it's based on that, so if you are after a little sneak peek at some of the upcoming features that are going to be released in just a couple of weeks, then be sure to check the link in the description and you can read through the full release notes there. Let's take a look at my first feature then. In the last release, we had the brand new entity picker, and along with that, we got some brand new theming and styling. And in this release, we've got a continuation of this, with that same styling and theming being carried across into our device picker. The device pickers received that same facelift, and it's now going to allow you to view manufacturers' logos right next to the device that you're looking at. In addition to that, we're also going to be able to see those same improvements that we saw in the entity picker, such as the additional information like the area, which integration it's from, and a few other things. Even though this is a really small change, it's actually quite a big visual change because it actually makes it so much easier to see what you're looking at. There's a nice bit of colour there, and you can actually just view more information in one little area. If you're a fan of this little change, then you'll also be happy to know that this theming and styling has been spread across the board, so you're also going to find it in your areas, categories, floors, labels, and also the user pickers. Carrying on then with feature number two, and we've got another feature that's a continuation of some work that was done last month, and we've got the Bluetooth visualization tool. This new visualization does exactly what the name suggests. It's going to allow you to visualize your Bluetooth network. Using this tool, you're going to be able to see what's connected to your network and also how it's connected. In addition to this, you're also going to be able to see known devices, as well as devices that have been discovered. If you select on one of the little nodes in the network map, you're also going to be able to see individual information about the device, such as its signal strength and other bits of information. Just like with the previous feature, if you're also a fan of how this visualization looks and you're also a ZHA user, you'll also be happy to know that this new visualization has also been added to the ZHA map. So if you're using it to visualize your Zigbee network, you're also gonna have this same updated design. If we stay on topic with the design changes, we've got my third new feature, and this one is an enhancement to the sidebar. If you previously wanted to adjust the order of your sidebar, you'd need to enter this little wiggle mode and you could do this by either pressing and holding at the top of the menu or by heading into your preferences and selecting to change the order. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. In the little wiggle mode, you could then just adjust things by moving things up and down. And it was always a little bit clunky and it was always a little bit harder on mobile. Thankfully though, this has now all been changed. And as of this release, the wiggle mode is no more. Hello darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. If you now press and hold at the top of the menu or you head into your preferences and choose to reorder, you'll instead be greeted by this brand new panel. Inside of this panel, you'll be able to just make use of drag and drop and also make use of the show and hide buttons. And it's much easier to actually reorder the menu and it also performs way better on mobile devices. Although we've lost our beloved wiggle mode, this little enhancement to the sidebars actually ushered in our fourth new feature, which is yet another sidebar change. If you've ever reordered your sidebar and made use of the little wiggle, then you're definitely gonna be super familiar with it because anytime you ever changed or reordered your sidebar, you'd actually have to do this for every device you visited. This could be super annoying if you were visiting multiple devices, maybe you're on your computer and laptop and then a wall panel, or maybe you just switched between your internal and external network connection, which would involve a different sidebar for each of those connections. The reason that this happened was because the sidebar configuration was actually stored per device, but as of this release, these settings are now stored per user, so whenever you move to any other device, that sidebar is going to follow you around. If you're making use of any tablets or wall panels around your home and they've got their own customized sidebars, if they're all using the same user profile, you're probably better off just creating a unique user for each of those devices, just so that they can all maintain their own side menu. Let's wrap this up then with my fifth and final feature. And for this one, we're gonna move away from the customization side of things. And we're instead gonna take a look at a brand new integration, which is a new integration for your Amazon Echo devices. This new integration allows you to set up and connect your Amazon Echo devices and perform automations on things like making announcements and playing the radio. 
One of the really nice things about this integration is it's part of the auto discovery. So when your Home Assistant detects any of your Echo devices, you'll just be prompted to actually add them and use them in Home Assistant. If you've ever wanted to make use of your Amazon Echo devices in Home Assistant, then you'll have had to set up and make use of the Hacks integration. So if you've never ran through that whole process or you've never wanted to, this integration is a great one to actually test out and try. My hopes with this integration is that over time with contributions and just as it develops, that it gets more and more features because it's currently not as feature rich as the Hacks integration, but it's a bit of a cat and mouse game because Amazon change things all the time and potentially they might even just block out those APIs and stop it working entirely because that's definitely something Amazon would do. If you're making use of any Amazon Echo devices in your home, then try the integration out and just let me know what you think of it in the comments below. And there we go, guys. That's been a little look at five of the features that I've really liked in this update. There is, however, a whole bunch of other changes. We've got things like grouping media players, changes to the automation dashboard, and loads of others. If you've enjoyed this video, then don't forget to drop me a like. And if you're not already, hit the subscribe button and ding dong the notification bell, and you'll be alerted to any future video that I do. As always, a massive thank you to these awesome dudes. These awesome dudes are my Patreons and also my YouTube members. And if you are interested in helping support my channel, which in turn allows me to create content like this, then you'll find links to all the places that you can go to support me, all in the description below. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.